Next up at UFC Vegas 90, we have Lucas Brisky taking on Johnny Walker's younger brother, Walter Walker. Lucas Brisky, eight and four overall, one, three, and one in his last five. He is riding a three fight skate. He's taking on a Walter Walker. Walter. It sounds like his name is Walter Walker. Why and I'm doing Brazilian a Russian flag. Well, he is Brazilian, even though dude be living in Russia. But he is 5-0 in his last five, and that's because he's 11-0 in his career with seven stoppages. And we'll start on the Volter side. That's the more interesting side of this matchup. He's Johnny Walker's younger brother. He's massive like Johnny. He actually looks like Johnny in the face there, but he fights nothing like Johnny Walker. He's very physically imposing, but unlike his brother, he is controlled, he works forward cleanly, and he looks to grapple. He is a giant Brazilian living in Russia. He fights like a Dagestani. He is a heavyweight Dagestani. He'll move forward, throw some big strikes. They're not very fast, and then just be humongous and shoot takedowns. And he shoots real takedowns. He's not grinding against the cage trying to trade. He will shoot actual, very real takedowns. He does get hit a lot. His striking is is not good. That's what I'm saying. He fights like a Dagestani. If he had his brother striking and then the wrestling that he's picked up in Russia, he'd be phenomenal. But he is still very, very good. He's undefeated for a reason. But it doesn't take a whole lot of tape study to watch him get smacked around a little bit in a couple of fights before getting a takedown and winning there. He's taking on Lucas Bresky. Lucas Bresky is the far better striker in this matchup. He's a well-rounded heavyweight. He's got solid power, solid speed decent, I mean, the takedowns are, are mediocre, really nice leg kicks. He is athletic. He has no problem just spinning around, working in whatever attacks he wants to. The problem, though, is that he does not seem to react very well when strikes go his way. He will literally turn his head or he'll overreact defensively, which allows him to get hit even more. In this matchup, I think he'll overreact defensively, which allows Walter to shoot takedowns. I think Walter dominates in this fight. He should be able to come forward, ragdoll Lucas, and get it done. The issue, though, is his striking is absolutely miserable. He does eat a ton of shots. His face gets smashed on the way in every time. Somebody like Lucas, who hits very hard, can absolutely catch him when he's charging in. But most heavyweights, Lucas included, are not used to a massive six foot six Brazilian who wrestles like a Dagestani charging forward. Volter should be the pick. Why this line is tightening is beyond me. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what do you think, Jakey Boy? Minus two seventy now. It's it's uh, crazy, getting even tighter. But I I, mean, I I get it right because Volter is not that great of fighter, right? I mean, the strike he 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 gets tired. The striking is sloppy. It's it's not very precise at all. But this literally is a situation where he's coming to the UFC, Johnny Walker's brother, and they were like, "Let me find the, the, <laughs> the one guy that this guy can beat." And if you're Volter Walker. This is the dude. This is the dude. They set you up to beat a guy like Bresky because Bresky is going to be the better striker, but it shouldn't matter. You watch that Carl Williams fight, that Carl Williams fight, the takedowns were so fucking easy to the fact where even when Carl Williams was basically hands on his knees, and he said he wasn't tired, but this dude is hands on his <laughs> knees, gasping for air, still fucking got takedowns very, very easily and got the control that he needed to win that fight. So even if Volta Walker gets tired, which he does get tired in past fights, I've seen him back it up <sighs> and then boom, right to a blast double. He still can get takedowns even when he is completely gassed. I saw Carl Williams do it to Bresky. I've seen other people do it to Bresky. He is just so easy to take down and he will slow down himself as well. So even if Volter is getting tired, as long as he's able to get a takedown or two in the first round and make this dude Bresky work, I think they gas kind of at the same rate. And if they're gassing at the same rate, I don't think Bresky's going to have any. In, the power's to... gone quick. Yeah. Oh, we're doing that again. Okay. So I believe that Bresky isn't going to have the, the, the honestly, just the tenaciousness to, to finish a guy like Volter, and he's going to be able to get a takedown to, to steal rounds again. So I think he's very live for an early finish, to, which is crazy control and just being big as fuck. Uh, but I get people's concerns, but he should be able to win this fight. I mean, this literally was like, dude, you can beat this guy, and I don't know who else you can beat, honestly, but this, this should be is the guy. You and I have talked about this like privately because you've been updating me as this line has been tightening. 
And I'm like, this is an SD Dumas situation all over again. This is last week. For some reason, SD Dumas was everybody's favorite underdog. Everybody on the internet, he was everybody's favorite underdog. And I was very high on Nurzelton Ruzabuyev because Nurzelton was a very good wrestler. And now that fight played out oddly, but it was very clear that SD was getting pieced up. And obviously there was an eye poke and an unfortunate ending, but it was very clear that SD was getting pieced up before that. And I think, or Jacob's theory is that a lot of people looked at that fight and they're like, we think Nurzelton sucks. So then they decided to take their money and bet on somebody who also sucks. Don't do that here. It Don't look it at happens. I, I, I see it happen every single week. Just because you think somebody sucks, you can think that Walter Walker sucks, and I've had the discussion before uh, multiple times in cards this year. Just because you think he sucks doesn't mean you have to bet against him because you're betting on a guy who also sucks, you know? So think he, <laughs> think he sucks, that's fine. If you want to put like a flyer on Bredsky or whatever, but if you're putting actual bets just because you think somebody sucks and you're betting on somebody that actually sucks, I don't know why you would do it. That's, I mean, people were putting hundreds. I saw somebody put $2,000 on SD Dumas last week, bragging about the ticket like it was a genius move. It's like, dude, and nobody could tell me why they thought or how they thought SD would win. All they would do is trash Nurselton. And some of the people I've seen like Lucas Bresky here are doing that. I haven't seen somebody say, well, Lucas can win doing X, Y, Z. I've just seen, oh, Valter striking sucks. He slows down. It's like, okay. But how does Lucas win? Do you think he's going to outstrike Falter and knock him out on his feet before he gets taken down? Is that what you think? Well, uh, okay. Don't bet on him. Don't bet him. And the, the odds are enticing, but I'll take a giant heavyweight. A gi I'll take a giant undefeated heavyweight who wrestles like a welterweight in your hotel over, over a, door, a dude who's one in three, one, three, and one in his last five. Any day of the week. Bresky does have beautiful eyes, though. Those things are fucking like a water fountain. I just want a water to, fountain. I just want to drink them up. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Pretty I do beautiful think beautiful eyes, man. Jesus. I do think um, Walter wins, and I'm confident enough to bet on him. Same reason I was confident enough to bet oh on. Oh my Nurzelton. God! We have live in the flesh line movement. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. What happened now? Cynthia Calvillo is plus one thirty two now. Pierre Rodriguez minus one fifty two. To that widen or tighten? I forget what it was. Can't remember. <laughs> Either way, I do have... Volter is the other half of that parlay I have with Alex Morono. Two guys who I am very confident in to win that, you know, should be able to get it done. And that is, I believe, plus money. I don't have it right in front of me, but if you're a premium member, you had access to that before I placed it or before this video when I placed it. You got alerted instantly. So if you want to unlock everything else and check out all of Jacob's bets, we want picks.com. Oh, I got some good ones this week too. We've got this, the safe-ish parlay that we've debuted. If you guys are just <laughs> tuning in, I have a safe-ish parlay aside the uh, safety parlay that I feel pretty good about. So, Well, there you go. You can unlock my safety parlay, Jacob's safe-ish parlay, and throw them head-to-head. -head. We want picks.com. Click become a member. Only $10 for an entire month worth of access. And I personally will have Valter in my lineup for $9,400 have, because um, he should win by finish. Yeah, we have some uh, just crazy developments in the chat. I mean, keep my eye on it. We have, not only do we have Steve Balboni in the live chat right now, but we also have Tommy Tough Knuckles. So they're both in here. I mean, we're just looking. Who are what is happening? I've seen Steve Balboni in the Discord. Seems like a fine gentleman. Who the fuck's Tommy Tough Knuckles? You don't know Tommy Tough Knuckles? No. Oh, no. That's not good for anybody, honestly. That's, that's not good for anybody. We got to respect Tommy Tough Knuckles. Who is this? Uh, it's, I wouldn't ask those questions out loud, Angelo. Okay. Well, then let's move on. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.